Hey everybody, it's Josh Dorkin with BiggerPockets.com. Today we've got an interview with Ken Corsini. Ken can be found on BiggerPockets at BiggerPockets.com slash users slash GARP, G-A-R-P. And uh, his website is GAinvesting.com. Ken, how's it going? Welcome to uh, the show. Good. Hey, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Uh, it's my pleasure, man. It's my pleasure. All right, man. Let's let's jump right into this thing. We're we're gonna try a new format today, so let's see how it works. All right. Um, let's talk about you really quickly. You're a real estate investor. You do turnkey properties. Um, tell us about yourself. You know, give us the quick summary. Yeah, uh, I got started in real estate. Started the company about six years ago. It was in 2005. Um, actually, had the corporate job. Did the corporate thing for a pretty large insurance brokerage. For five years, did very well, became assistant vice president at a pretty young age. And uh, it was one of those things. I just knew I wanted to get into real estate. And I, I was the guy listening to Carlton Sheets, you know, in my car, yeah. putting the CDs on my, on my way to work, just figuring out an entry point into real estate. I just knew I wanted to get into real estate. And eventually, I actually jumped ship, left my day job, and just said, I'm going to do real estate full time. Wow. Everybody thought I was crazy. Yeah. I probably was, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I hooked up with a group out of Seattle that was doing some training on on how to do assignments. Okay, you know where you get a property under contract and you find a buyer and then you assign it, and so that was really my entry point. I did that for a couple years, and then learned the business. You know, just sort of entrenched myself in in real estate and contracts and acquiring properties. And then watched, you know, 2007 sort of watched as the market turned and it was, it was about picking up foreclosures and learning how to renovate. So I started a renovation company in 2007 and put together the program that we still operate today, which is turnkey investing, okay. um, really geared towards out-of-state investors. Gotcha. Folks that, you know, don't have the time to invest in real estate or, or the knowledge of a local market. And we offer them a turnkey product. And okay. so that's what I've really been doing for about the last three, four years. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So turnkey uh, investments, um, a lot of people, a lot of more savvy investors will typically shy away from those for, yeah. for a fair amount of reasons. Um, why are these things appealing? Why is a turnkey property something that somebody might want to get into? Yeah, no, great question. Uh, you know, I don't work with a lot of local investors because most local investors know the market and or they know agents or they know rehabbers or they know lenders. And so they've it's not really a great fit in a lot of cases. But we work with a lot of out-of-state investors who want to be in Atlanta. They don't know the market. They just know Atlanta is a great market to be in. Sure. They don't know contractors. There's no way they could manage them. There's no way they could place a tenant. And so what our company does is we offer a turnkey solution. Okay. You know, we know you want to be in this market. We're selling properties at a discount that have already been renovated. You know, we're experts at putting tenants in place. We've already got relationships with the lenders. And so it's it's a real easy kind of walk into immediate cash flow, immediate equity yeah. position for somebody that's not local. Gotcha. So now you, you guys offer the soup to nuts service. You find the deal, you guys do the work, you guys put, put tenants in there, and then I come in as a buyer and I say, oh, you know, I'm looking for a property in maybe this price range, um, and you guys say, yeah, you got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, pick one, and let's exactly. do it. Okay. Uh, That's exactly right. And most, you know, it's for an out-of-state investor who's trying to figure out where to put their money, especially because most people's money sitting on the sidelines, not making any money. Sure. You know, it's an opportunity to step in and make, you know, 20%, 25% cash on cash return, you know, immediately have a house with $300 in positive cash flow, you know, at maybe 80 cents on the dollar, something like that. Okay. Which is, it's strong to not have to put any work into that, have right. the relationships already in place. I mean, it makes sense for, yeah. for a lot of people. Okay. Okay. So now, you know, I'm going to ask you a tough question. You may not want to answer it, but I know you and you will answer it. So it's all good. Um, <laughs> What what are the negatives? I mean, you know, there's this is definitely you know not for everybody, and there's yeah. definitely always going to be a downside. So you know, give us give us the upfront and honest. What's the downside? Yeah, well, real estate investing is not for everybody. Sure. I mean, that's really the reality. And it's funny. I've had I've had friends and family come to me and say, "Ken, I want a property," and I flat out said no uh, <laughs> because I really, I mean, I don't want to. 
I don't know if you're ready for what it is to be a landlord. Yep. And whether you're local or you're long distance, landlording is can be it could be a nightmare if you don't know what you're doing if you're not prepared for it. Sure. It's sure. there's money to be made in real estate, but yep. there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. And there's a lot of people I don't believe have the temperament or the personality to deal with the day to day, you know, garbage that comes with real estate investing. Now, yeah. not to say that there's not a lot of money to be made, but if there's an ugly side, you know, to to what we do, it's just it's the nature of the business. Now, now tell us about the the um, the management. So, so you guys are covering all the property management. So, in terms of of, of work for the investor, what is mm-hmm. there, right? I mean, are you guys a hundred percent handling every every decision, um, or or are you passing some of it to to the purchaser? How long do you guys uh, stay in as property managers? What's what are the details? Well, we are we're not licensed property managers, so we have a, a, a team that we've partnered up with. That's really an extension of who we are. We're on the phone with them every day, but. Um, you know, the property manager does make the sort of the day-to-day decisions. They collect the rent. But at the same time, you know, the, if ultimately the investor has to make the call, okay, they're two weeks late. Do we go ahead and file the eviction notice? Right. You know, there's decisions like that. Or the water he- heater's broken. Do we pay for a new one or do we try to fix the old one? Sure. You know, an investor's going to want to make that decision. Or they're not going to want to let somebody else make that decision right. for them. And hopefully they're not waiting two weeks before they start evicting people. Hopefully they're... On the ball, right? Exactly. But <laughs> yeah. there's still decisions, and, and you know, for some, the responsibility of of making that decision just weighs so heavily on them yeah. that they don't have any business in real estate because right. it's got to, you know, you got to have thick skin. Yeah. Do you guys have any form of training? Because you know, for me, this is this is you know fairly new. Talking about the turnkey stuff. I mean, I've I know what it is. I get it, but. Um, do you guys actually train your buyers? Is there, and you or your competitors in different markets, your market, whatever, is there kind of like a tra- training component where it's like, hey, here's your property, but here's the handbook? Or do you say, go to Bigger Pockets, there's the handbook right there? Right? <laughs> That's right. We just send them to you, Josh, and you yes. take care of them. Nice. <laughs> nice. You know, it's not necessarily training as much as it's consulting. Yeah. You know, I talked to investors that I sold houses to two years ago. That call me up and say, "Hey Ken, here's what's happening. What do you think I should do?" Yeah. So we know we stay involved. We stay in the lives of our investors for as long as they own a property that we sold them. Okay. And you know, there's a lot of days where I'm just consulting through. Hey, here's what I think you should do. Here's what I would do if I'm in this situation. Right. right. And it's good, but you know, truthfully, I- I've had a lot of investors have experienced um, really good, you know, good experiences with houses, and then you know, the one or two one-offs that aren't so good. Yeah. But they get it, and they call me, and we work through it, and they end up buying more property from me. And that was going to be a follow-up. Uh, so, yeah. so how many of your of your buyers? What percentage uh, would you say are return buyers? The majority, really, definitely the majority. Yeah, once they buy one property, they see that it makes money, that they're doing well, yeah. and that that interest rates are still low, properties are still cheap. Then the majority of our investors come back from multiple properties, gotcha. which you know we want them to. We're it, this business is about the referral. Yeah, it's about taking care of your customers, and that's what we're for. And obviously, as the market changes, you guys need to be dynamic, right? Correct. Um, yeah, you know, it, we're we're always even moving within Atlanta into the sub markets that make the most sense. Gotcha. And into the price points and the age of the homes that make the most sense. So we're very cognizant of you know what the market's doing. What do you recommend of somebody who's who's researching a company like yours or some of the others that are out there how do they know are you legitimate how do, how do they check you out how do they check out these other companies and what are the things to, to look for and, and what are the red flags you know just like in any business or anytime you're interviewing somebody you know you want referrals sure you talk to somebody else who's been through the program talk to somebody who's bought a house yeah you know we work with a lot of local vendors in Atlanta including attorneys lenders, property managers, um, you know, there's a lot of people that comprise our team. And so there's an opportunity for a potential customer to talk to a lot of different people that, that does business with us. Sure, sure. Or previous customers. And I would say, you know, if you're looking at a different market and there's a turnkey company out there, right? shop around, check the prices, make sure they're, you know, they're not gouging you, they're not asking too much, but then talk to the, talk to their team Get some some references, people that have actually bought houses. What were those experiences like? Right. 
Um, similar to like checking out any sort of vendor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. What else? What else can we hit you with here? So turnkey. You know, again, obviously, lots of these guys who are buying these properties, they're the novice. They're the guys who don't have the time, the the energy to to be doing all the work. You know, they they just kind of want things on the silver platter for them, right? Um, right. What other options are available for those guys outside of turnkey investing? You know, I'm a new guy. What would be your suggestions? If, if I didn't want to go turnkey, you know, what would be the path that you would recommend me on? If you don't want to go turnkey, um, it would be tricky, I think, to invest out of your market. Yeah. So I would first thing I would say is get to know the market you're in. Yep. Because in any major metropolitan area, there's going to be certain sub-markets that make sense and, so, and certain ones that don't. Right. So, you know, the first thing I would do is plug into uh, your local RIA, you know, your RIA Real Estate Investors Association, get to know the guys who are investing and where they're investing and why they're investing in those areas. You know, I get to know, really, you start assembling a team of professionals that work around you and alongside you to help you make good decisions. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, but again, it's about the referral. Find out who's doing it successfully in your area. And get to know those people. You want to connect and link up and be associated, affiliated with with successful investors. You know? Exactly. They're and not find your, out what works. Yeah. If somebody's doing it successfully. Why? Why are they successful? Right. Right. And you want those guys to be your partners. You you know you don't want them to be your competitors. You want to you want everybody to be part of your team essentially because other yes. investors will send leads. Other lenders uh, investors will send you um, potential deals too. Right. It, that's exactly right. And you know it's funny. It's a small world. When you start getting into the real estate investing world and you start, you'll find that you bump shoulders with a lot of the same people. And it's not as competitive and as cutthroat as most people might think. I mean, a lot of times you make great friends who are really operating in the same space you are. Yeah. And you'll toss each other deals. Say, hey, I got this under contract. I can't buy it. Now do you want it? Yeah. Or vice versa. And it really becomes more of a sort of a partnership, a community of other investors. Yeah. Um, so I would definitely say plug in. Plug into your community. That's great. All right, man. Well, listen, let's, we're trying to keep this one quick, so let's let's see. I think we did a great job. We kept it under hey. 15. Um, yeah. Lots of great tips for turnkey investing. Um, Ken Corsini, it's uh, gainvesting.com. That's and uh, biggerpockets.com slash users slash GARP. Um, picture is a little pixelated, but it's all good. Lots of great info, so I hope you don't that didn't bother you guys too much. Ken, you have anything you want to add really quick? Oh, hey, I appreciate you being on here. Hopefully we can do this again. I enjoyed it. Fantastic, man. Talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, Josh. Bye. Bye.